Xavier Renegade Angel was a weird, weird show that aired on Adult Swim in 07. Its titular character, Xavier, wanders around, dispenses empty platitudes, and generally comments on too many things to itemize through the lens of a show that you'd think was probably a dream if you saw it at 2am on the right kinds of substances. I'm just a simple seeker on a spirit quest to discover what doth thy life. This show is generally one of my favorite things on the planet and I've always wanted to share why. Let, let's take a trip. One of the things about Xavier that really appeals to me personally is just how far it takes its comedy. You might as well just finish me off. I was gonna do you one worse. I'm gonna shave you down and make me a wrist hair mustache. This WHM is gonna be sweet, huh? Uh, I didn't know. I'm sorry, mister. Anytime I recommend the show to a friend or anyone for that matter, I always have to preface it that not only does the show require your full attention to be appreciated, but it also demands a pretty firm grasp over the English language. Now, I could think of quite a number of movies and TV shows and games and books that demand some form of immense dedication to actually get something out of it, but none of these I would call comedies. A 50 plus episode crime drama about social inequality and systemic oppression like The Wire demanding your full attention makes sense, but a show like Xavier doesn't appear to even be comparable, yet it is. I don't think I've seen a single piece of media with a higher density of individual quantifiable jokes per minute than XRA. What sort of law is this? Laws? Laws are illegal here! Guilty! But I'd be remiss if I pretended this show was strictly just a comedy. Don't look for meaning because there is none, okay? It does have quite a lot to say about some of the weirder parts of society. Generally speaking, the show is taking a stab at New Age mysticism. What? Doth. Life. And even more generally, pseudo-intellectualism and the idea that anyone has any idea about the greater cosmic meaning of the universe, or has the answers to life's biggest questions. Do you believe in God? That's a complicated question. It depends on what you mean by God. Because I don't know what the person means by believe or God, and they think they know. Yes or no. It helps no one to be reductive. The question is asked so that I can be firmly placed on one side of a two, of a binary argument. Yes or no. The very notion of belief itself can be rhetorically whittled to the bare knob of its meaning. And the probability that they construe belief and construe God the same way I do is virtually zero. The show, through the lens of Xavier himself, teeters on the border between nihilism, the belief that life is meaningless and that nothing can truly be known, and solipsism, the belief that the only thing you truly know in the universe is your own existence as you perceive it. Uh, if you're not familiar with dumb philosophical jargon, basically nobody knows what's going on, especially Xavier. Your body shrieks the silent truth all of the pretty people of this world deny. Yeah, I do hunch squats to power crunch my guacs. Feel a bit cliche bringing this up, but this reading of the show is probably why it was compared to Rick and Morty back when at least a few people liked that show. The largest difference in characterization between Rick and Xavier, putting to one side the fact that it is tremendously less subtle about these themes than Xavier. What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. And when you're less subtle than a show with dialogue like this. Okay, you look normal. Now just act normal. Clutch the dark purple hairs of the galloping orangutan of normalcy and ride. Ride. You got a problem. The show slightly betrays its own attempt at a nihilistic outlook because, fundamentally, nihilism is still a belief. It's a belief in the lack of beliefs, a criticism leveled at it in earnest, but a belief nonetheless. Rick, however, does not believe life to be meaningless. He knows, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that life and the universe is meaningless and that there is no higher power. There is no God Summer. Gotta rip that band-aid off now, you'll thank me later. Okay, he wishes that there was one, but he knows that there isn't, and this information is passed directly to the audience. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. This is what gives the show its smug, uh, I do not know what other word to say, uh, Reddit quality? Uh, if you've ever wondered. <laughs> Contrasting that with Xavier is what I mentioned earlier, Xavier is literally the most clueless goober on the face of the planet. All he does is wander and ramble. The lyrical intro to the show sung by Xavier, which is really cool, you should give it a listen, 
details his nonsensical, backwards, fundamentally broken understanding of philosophy, how the world works, interpersonal relations, and even like basic truths like knowledge and logic. I'm just a simple warrior for peace, trying to do right by God's creatures. He's like this walking ball of chaos, like the static white noise on a CRT TV with no input. He kind of knows who he is and he sort of understands what he believes, but not to any extent that would actually make his decisions make any sense. That's one of the most key things about Xavier that makes the show so compelling, Xavier himself. Everything from his bizarre voice, which only gets weirder in season two. This week, instead of eating tacos, let's just talk. Oh. You, Sandy, five foot blonde, pretty drunk, we made passing eye contact while you were giving birth to me. Me, single white male, thick and huge, I tore you up that night, Coco. To his affront to God design, to his penchant to cause the worst possible things to happen everywhere he goes, there are quite a number of adult sim shows that rely very heavily on their lead character or performer, and Xavier is no exception. And while I could wax philosophical about the deep implications of him, honestly, most of the reason why I like him is that he's just, he's just really funny. Just gotta get a hold of some pigskin. This is my shimmering life prize. All I must do is create a diversion. What could distract people who love sports? Sports! 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 Probably my favorite moment with Xavier, possibly my favorite character moment of all time, comes from the show's unanimously agreed upon best episode, Shaka Shuri Blowdown. The entire first season deals with the semi-overarching plot point of Xavier looking for the person who killed his father, so he can exact revenge and kill the man who did it. In a vision, his father explains, in completely unambiguous terms, that Xavier is the one who killed him. Son, it was you who killed me. What kind of stupid name is you who? Xavier, ever the completely narcissistic, delusional, self-absorbed sociopath, decides that honorable suicide isn't the option here, but also is. Xavier splits himself into two distinct yet completely identical identities inside his own mind. These two then engage in what is far and away the greatest monologue in the history of fiction. I called you. No, I called you. And you sound like the ugliest son of a bitch I ever heard. You sound like the physical manifestation of some loser's inner demons. Well, you sound like some total chode's inability to confront the reality of his past actions. If and then they have a psychedelic dream fight. Uh, don't worry, I won't spoil who wins. I couldn't, for even a moment, possibly imagine what could inspire somebody to write something like this, but oh, it's a beautiful sight to behold. Xavier's perpetually horny, perpetually pseudo-sympathetic actions always have complete perspicuity, yet you never actually know what's going to happen. Every episode is just bad and worse into universe collapsingly catastrophic, and the only constant is Xavier being there to stoke the flames. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Speaking of beautiful, the visuals of Xavier are, how can I put this, ugly? Really ugly. Most of Adult Swim's shows and most adult animation in general tends to skew to the uglier side of art direction. So what does Xavier achieve through its art style? I'd say two main goals, surrealism and discomfort. Xavier can look very, for lack of a better word, trippy in a lot of scenes. There are a lot of bizarre design choices made solely to look as offbeat and strange as possible. Xavier's design being the most obvious example, but there are a lot of smaller choices. Like how side characters are often rendered with an even lower amount of fidelity than Xavier himself, this obviously isn't going into the frequent and well-used art style shifts. Nothing keeps you on your toes visually than blinking and suddenly looking at a different show entirely. But then there's discomfort. This one will be a little bit harder to quantify since everyone is different, but I'd like to come at this with a bit of a personal anecdote. I remember the exact first time in my entire life that I saw Xavier Renegade Angel. This must have been around 07 to 09, and I was browsing channels randomly since, for the first time in my life, I had access to something beyond basic cable. I had landed on G4 Tech TV Canada, an old favorite of mine where I'd watch episodes of X-Play or reviews on the run, but there I was, staring down a 3D animated show that I had never seen before. I didn't know at the time, and wouldn't until many years later, but I was watching the episode Xavier's Maneuver, specifically the scene in which the mob boss was being attacked by his tiny, perpetually regenerating hitmen. They began this attack with two of the small men ripping off his toenail before throwing it straight up and directly into the center of his eye. 
With a look of horror and disgust on my face, I switched the channel, checking to make sure nobody had witnessed me watching that. I don't know why I was concerned about that so much, but I guess I didn't want anybody to think for even a second I had enjoyed what I'd just seen. Now, since that child was me, and I am that child, this scene still bothers me slightly, but there are a lot of scenes comparable to it in the show, and they don't just exist for the sake of gross out humor. There's a toenail gag in Spongebob, later Spongebob, a scene which is frequently cited as the exact moment the show became completely unsalvageable, and that moment is nothing like this one despite similar appearance. In Spongebob, there is a sense of tone deafness. The sense that some sick person on the writing staff actually thought that this was A, appropriate for a kid's show, and B, funny. It's neither, and that's why this moment lives in infamy. This similar moment in Xavier knows it's awful, and it's doing it anyway, just to watch you squirm. Just to make sure you feel as much pain as possible while you watch this man get torn to pieces. The world of Xavier Renegade Angel is a scary, unforgiving place where death is only as sudden as it is completely random, and the innocent are spared only slightly less than the totally unaffiliated. Best part is, I'm helping the Earth. As I wrap this up, I look back on how one should recommend Xavier Renegade Angel. Should it be recommended on the strength of its comic writing? And while the 300 IQ analysis, like the one attempted earlier in this video, is definitely the common discourse I see when this show is brought up, it's just, it's just so funny. So goddamn funny. But as a piece of surrealist fiction, it arguably wouldn't need to be funny to be a great show. If you watched the show and had no sense of humor, you'd still walk away with an arguably great experience. You'd hear some interesting perspectives about the world and society told through an unmistakably unique lens. Or maybe you should just watch it high, I don't know.